God bless you all. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Of you, Heavenly Father, we thank you this hour. Great is thy faithfulness, dear Lord. We thank you for bread of life. Once more, Lord, as your children have gathered, Lord, we want to hear from you. I have nothing good, Lord, to tell your children, Lord, on profitable seven. I'm reporting for duty, but I pray hide me another blood. Take me away, dear Lord, and speak through me, through your people, and hear through us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. So we turn our Bibles to Exodus 25, our usual reading for our Sunday school. Amen. It's been a while, so I'll do a little bit of revision, and I will take you from there. Amen. Exodus 25, please. I'm going to read verses 1 to 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth willingly. With his heart ye shall take my offering. This is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goes her, ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense and on stones and stones to be set in the air for that in the breastplate. And let them make me an, a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated, please. Amen. So you're welcome to Sunday school this morning. So we continue our study. Uh, So we continue our study on the tabernacle. I think we, we, we're looking at the table of shoe bread and the candlesticks in the Sunday school. Of course, the main service, we're looking at the priesthood. And uh, we saw that the tabernacle is in three courts, the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. Do we all remember, please? Yeah, so this is the, the outer court, the inner place, and the holies of holies. And we've seen the various elements in there. We saw that the brazen altar and the brass lava were the outer court. In the inner court, there was the um, table of shubra, the candlesticks, and also the table of incense. Then, of course, in the holies of holies, we have the ark and the covenant. So we're looking at the table of shubra and the golden candlesticks in our Sunday school. Amen. So these are the two we are referring to, the table of shoe bread and the golden candlesticks. And we've established that the candlesticks refers to the seven church ages in the New Testament. And the table of shoe bread, they had bread on there that they changed from every t now and then. And we saw that the table of shoe bread, the shoe bread refers to Christ the word. Do we all remember, please? So they were set um, opposite each other. You have to be eating the shoe bread for your age. That, that's the main thing here. So we saw this, that you have to be eating the shoe bread for your day. And we saw that in this last days, God has sent us Malachi for the prophet. And his role was to reveal the bread with the Shekinah glory. So what we said was that although the bread was to the inner court, you don't sit there and eat it. You ought to eat the bread in the holy place. Are we on the same page, please? Great. So that the word has to be revealed, the revelation of the word by the Holy Ghost in your soul. Amen. Great. So we're looking at the table of shoe bread. So actually it's the um, church ages and the, 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 the word for that age. But we, we decided to broaden a little bit so that we have uh, a broader scope. We, 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 so that we see things clearer. So we're looking at the times of the Gentiles. 70 weeks of Daniel, the seven church ages. Then we come to the bride age. Then we look at mystery Babylon. Do we all remember please? So this is the outline we are following. So we saw that the times of the Gentiles, they are political kingdoms, as we saw in Daniel 2. And we saw that the fullness of the Gentiles, as Paul says in Romans 11, is the church age dispensation. So the church age lays within the Gentile dispensation. Do we all see it, please? So we start in this, then we come to this. But another mystery in there is that this church age lays within what we call the 72 weeks of Daniel, the last week. So, 70 weeks, but this is the last week. And the last week in between the two half weeks is the Gentile age, the, the, the church ages. So, we saw that the church age lays within 70 weeks of Daniel. 70 weeks of Daniel under the times of the Gentiles. Are we on the same page, please? Great. 
So this is what we've been looking at for some time now. And we read in Luke 21, Luke 21, the disciples were adoring the temple. And Jesus told them that a time will come that one, no one stone of this temple will be left on the, the other. And they asked Jesus, when will these things be? So Jesus, in answering that question, said that Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we know that God always deals with the Israelites as a nation and the Gentiles as individuals. Now he's dealing with the Gentiles. He will turn back to the Israelites as a nation. So we ought to know where we are in times of the times of the Gentiles. Do we all get it, please? So that was the rationale for the, for, for the study. So we saw that the times of the Gentile also encompasses the Gentile dispensation, both the church and political image of Nebuchadnezzar, the four beasts, ram and goat, then the stone cut with our hands. So we've dealt with this. We, we're still on the political side of it. And we've dealt with the image of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 2. Now in Daniel 2, I can see some new faces, so let me do revision. In Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar, first of all, the children of Israel sinned against God. And God wanted to punish them. So he chose Babylon, headed by Nebuchadnezzar, to punish Israel. But because the children of Israel were his children, yet still he punished Babylon for punishing Israel. And we established that you should be careful how you handle the children of God, even in their wrong. You see? Then we saw that one day, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He had a dream, and in the dream he saw an image. The image had a head of gold, the arms and the chest silver, the, the torso brass, then the legs iron, then the feet iron and clay. And he woke up from his sleep. He couldn't understand it. So he called the magicians. You have to interpret to me the dream. First of all, I've forgotten the dream. You have to tell me the dream. And you tell me the interpretation thereof. The people were trying to play tricks on him. So you at least tell us the dream and we'll tell you the interpretation. And we saw that God still deals with people through dreams. Although dreams are secondary ways of God talking to man. The, the primary way is through the word. So whatever dream you have, you should cope with this. Amen? So, they were infuriating Nebuchadnezzar. They couldn't do it. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, look here, I'm giving you some time. If you don't come back to me with the image that I saw and the interpretation, I'm going to kill you all. So the head of these guys, when he was going in for Daniel, he told Daniel, this is what has happened. The king has given an ultimatum. And Daniel said, no, what? tell the king to be patient. And let's see whether God will show me this dream. And lo and behold, God showed Daniel the dream and the interpretation thereof. So we've seen that the head of gold was the Babylonian kingdom. The silver, the arms, and the chest was made of Persian. So after this kingdom came this kingdom. Then after this kingdom came the Grecian Empire. Then the Roman Empire came. Then the iron and the clay. Do we all get it please? Great. So we saw that this is the image that he saw. But in Daniel 7 to Daniel again had a vision and saw the satanic anointings on each of the kingdoms. Do you remember? So we saw that the Babylonian kingdom had the lion anointing with the wings of an eagle. You remember? Then the silver, the bear. Then the brass, the leopard. But the fourth one, Daniel called it a terrible beast. He couldn't describe it. Amen. So we've gone through all this. Gold and the anointing, silver and the bear, the brass and the leopard. So we are down here. The Roman Empire down to the feet. And we saw how the Roman Empire was uh, established. That there were two twins, Remus and Remulus. Who were running away, decided to establish a kingdom. One twin killed the other and formed this Roman, Rome, ancient Rome, on seven hills. You remember? Great. Eventually, it became an empire. So that was the iron. It was divided into two. And we went through the history, saw how it was divided into two. Eastern and Western Roman Empire. Do we all remember, please? Great. So we saw, so we are here. Actually... After the Roman Empire, we saw that this was iron. 
But when he came to the feet, it was iron and what? Clay. On both feet. And we saw that the feet has how many toes? Esther. How many toes has the feet? That's how we do it in Sunday school. Though. Get me the mic, please. Welcome. Hold on, hold on. We want to hear your voice, your sweet voice. Get me my microphone, please. This one is a simple question. Anatomy of the body. How many toes are on each feet? Five. Five each. Everybody clap for Esther. Let's welcome her. Great. And you can see that for the toe, the toes, there's one big toe on each, right? So we saw that on the feet, we have three angles to this feet. We have Western and Eastern Rome, and we have Catholicism and Protestantism. Do we all remember, please? And we saw that again, in terms of political powers, we have the Western powers led by United States of America. Are you making notes? New comments, make notes, though, because we ask questions. That's a humble advice. The, the Western powers is led by United States of America. Then the Eastern powers is led by Russia. So we, we are actually in time now, we are at where? The feet. And the anointing, remember, the terrible, the terrible beast starts from the Roman Empire and ends up at the feet. So this terrible beast, the satanic anointing, is still what is working now. But Daniel couldn't describe this beast. Do we all get a place? Daniel, the feet. Give me one angle for it. I want to make sure you, you catch it before we proceed. What I just said, what did you hear, please? I, I don't want to gloss over because it's very important to me. Amen. The feet, like what angle did you see? We said Western and Eastern powers. The Eastern powers is led by who? Russia. Russia. Give the mic to Daniel. Then the Western powers. Paul, Paul, Paul. Saint Paul. Then the Western powers who? The United States. United States. Great. And you live in the United States. So you have to know what is happening, right? Great. So we see that this terrible beast was not this. This that satanic anointing working for each kingdom. And we saw that Daniel couldn't describe it, right? So I've gone through this. Let me go on. So this is what we're looking at. We are at their feet. Church, are you with me, please? We are at their feet. Where we are now, you are living in, at the feet time. Amen? And we saw that Eastern and Western Rome, I'm not going to concentrate on this. So Romanism, Catholicism, and Protestantism, and Eastern and Western powers. Okay? I'm going to focus on this too. And always remember there's a terrible beast, a satanic anointing influencing these kingdoms. Are we on the same page, please? Great. So, we saw that, Brother Bram tells us here that the Romish church is in every nation. <laughs> Let me read it all. Yet, it is there running the world affairs in both the democratic nations and the more despotic ones. The Romish church is in every nation. It is mixed up in it all. Never think that the only powers you see, Russia, America, the Roman church is much more powerful. And that's what we want to concentrate because that's more of religion. Now remember, we saw that the, the Roman Empire transformed itself from a political kingdom to religion at the feet. You remember that we saw that in the book of Acts, after the death of Jesus and the persecution of the Jews, some eventually landed in Rome. They formed the true church, but because of altercations among the others, they were sacked by the Roman emperor then. Then the Roman paganism doctrine infiltrated that church. So, of course, after a while, there's no shepherd. Brother Abraham said the word was weak. Eventually, the church became dogmatic with paganism. Now, there was still a remnant that held onto the true word of God. So they were separated from the true church, now turned false church. Do you get it, please? So that means in terms of the church, we had two, true church and false church. Now, the false church had the backing of the state. So they persecuted the true church. 
do we all get a place? And we saw that in the Pergamian church, I even gave assignment the last time that you should read. I hope you read it, please. The denunciation, we saw how Constantine, in the time of Constantine, he was going for a battle and he saw a white cross in his dream. So he thought that he needed the help of the Christians. So he pleaded with them to pray for him, support him that when he wins the battle, he will help them. And it was so. He won the battle. Therefore, he started mingling with the affairs of the church. Persecution stopped. And he was trying to tell them to come together. That's false unity. In now terms, that's what we call the World Council of Churches. Trying to be one according to doctrine, but it won't be so. Amen. So that's where there was the false unity again of the state and the church. And it happened in what age? Pergamian churches. We'll get to that. But you, did you see, all see that? So that means pagan Rome now became what? Papal Rome. And that's when they had that council, the Nicene Council, AD 325, to talk about the Trinity. We'll, we'll get into that later. But something happens there that Brother Brown brings out. Let me go on. My time. Oh, okay. Again, we see that Brother Bram talks about seven visions that he, he had sometime back, I think, in 1933. Now, that seven visions, the first one was Mussolini invading Ethiopia and coming to a shameful end. It happened as he said it. Then the next one was Adolf Hitler who start a second world war, also come to a mysterious end. The third one was fascism and Nazism will be swallowed up in communism. And Brother Bram said we should watch Russia. Then he said signs will advance to a point that there will be X-shaped cars which will not need drivers. Then also American morals will pervert and decline. You saw that image that the woman had only a fig tree, a fig leaf in the central part. Then also a beautiful but cruel woman rising to great power in the United States. And Brother Bram said... He was thinking it was the Roman church, although it could be a president that also rising up. Amen. And the seventh one was America was in debris, a total blast on the land. So these are seven visions that Brother Bram had. Now how do we tie it into what we are doing? Remember at the feet we are looking at Catholicism and Protestantism. And we are looking at Western and Eastern powers, Russia and United States. Okay. So we'll be focusing on the third one. Fascism, Nazism, swallowed up in communism. And Brother Brown saying, watch where? Russia. Keep your eye on the king of the north. So the last time Brother Sean asked us and said, what was the north? Because we also saw that it was eastern and western powers. And we said that that was geographic in terms, in relation to Jerusalem. Moscow is on north of where? Jerusalem. So king of the north is in reference to Jerusalem. Are we all on the same page, please? Great. Then we will also look at the fifth, sixth, and seventh. The, 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 the fifth was with the moral decay, then we also, which was connected to America in one sense. Then also the rise of the cruel woman, which was, but the brand believed to be a Roman Catholic church, although he said it could be possibly be a woman rising in great power. Then also explosion of United States into debris. So we are concentrating on three, five, six, and seven in relation to our study. Are we all on the same page, please? Great. So before we proceed, Buddha Bram talks about free curtains. Let's see what he says, because you see that it fits into the picture. That's why I'm bringing it here. There's three curtains. I say this in the name of the Lord. Don't you forget, there's an iron curtain, a bamboo curtain, and a purple curtain. Watch that purple curtain. Keep your eye on that. So all that we have Russia, we have United States, we have Protestantism, we have Catholicism. But the Brown is telling us we should keep our eye on the purple curtain. We want to see what a purple curtain is. Amen. Amen. Oh. Listen, that say the Lord, repent. I predict three curtains in the name of the Lord. There's one called the iron curtain, which will be what? So the iron curtain is Russia. Watch red China. That will be the war bamboo curtain. So we've seen China as war, the bamboo curtain. They are horrible, all of them. 
But watch that war, purple curtain, that's rising in the United States and over all the world. The Roman world empire. So whilst you are watching the iron and the bamboo, the one you ought to really keep your eye on is the Roman empire, the purple curtain. Amen. The cruelest of all of war, there. There's an iron curtain, there's a bamboo curtain, there's a purple curtain. Brother, don't you fear none of the rest of them, but watch that purple curtain. Amen? Don't you watch about that. Don't watch iron curtains and bamboo curtains, but watch the purple curtain. That's the one that's going to get you. Don't you never worry about that. Amen? Brother Abraham said, you just mark that down and say, Brother Abraham said it, and put it in your Bible and see if it's right. So this is the purple curtain, Rome. Amen. But again, Brother Bram, after talking about these three curtains, talks about a peculiar one he calls the sin curtain. Brother Bram tells us here, last year, standing in the same place, Mr. Wood here and I, going up in the hill in a kind of morning, about his wife being sick, the Holy Spirit said, Pick up the rock laying there, throw it up in the air. When it comes down, say, That saith the Lord. There will be a judgment strike in the air. Tell him that he will see the hand of God the, night, the next few hours. I told Mr. Wood is present tonight, and I guess eight or ten of them men of 15 that was there at that time when it took place the next morning where the Lord came down in a whirlwind and ripped the mountain out around us and cut the tops of the tree loose and made three blasts and said, Judgment is headed towards the west coast. And two days after that, Alaska almost sank beneath the earth. And since then, up and down the coast, the belches of God's judgment against that spiritual screen. There is an iron curtain, there's a purple curtain, and there's a sin curtain. So Brother Bram linked the sin curtain to the west coast that will be receiving judgment. I remember in the seventh vision, United States was blasted to debris. Amen. So the west coast, that sin curtain. Amen. So we want to look at the, the, uh, the fourth kingdom and the anointing. We want to start on that. Where are we now, please? Where? Great. So let's go to Daniel 8, 23 to 25. It's been a while, so I want to read it, then we pick up from there. Aren't you glad for the message of the hour? We should be thankful for the law, for the words of life he's given us. Daniel 8. So we want to look at the fourth kingdom, the anointing that was on it. No, no, no. The, the kingdom, actually. Remember in Daniel 8, huh, we saw the ram and the goat. You remember? Oh, do you remember? We saw the ram with one horn. That was, over, uh, that, that, uh, was overcome by the goat with two horns. You remember, please? Oh, you forgotten? The ram and the goat. So we saw that the ram was the Medes and the Persians. And the goat was what? The Grecian Empire, right? And we saw that the horns eventually divided into four. The four kingdoms that came out of the Grecian Empire. You remember, please. I showed images. So we want to see the fourth kingdom in Daniel 8. Then we proceed from there. Then we go to the beast. Daniel 8, 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty. So this fourth kingdom, the king that will be ruling will be very what? Powerful. But not by his own power. So this, this, this kingdom, the king ruling it is very powerful, but he's working through other channels. Do we all get it please? So you won't see with your blind eye that king in power, but he's operating through other channels. And that's what Brother Bram says, the Romish church is throughout all the nations. Even in Congress, if you see the number of people that are Catholics, you will be, you'll be overwhelmed. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy. And through his policy also he shall cause craft 
to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken without hand. Amen. So this is a description of the fourth kingdom in Daniel 8. The key thing here is he will be very powerful, but the power is not of his own. Keep that in mind. Amen. So, Brother Brown tells us, let me go on. Just get the history of Josephus and the other writers, his first two Babylons and so forth, and you find out that that's, um, that's right, that there was not no church. The first organized church ever was the Catholic Church, about 300 years at the round of the last apostles. And about 300 years later, the Catholic Church was organized, and a persecution set in and forced the people into the Catholic Church, and they had a church and state united. Amen. And that was after what so-called the conversion of Constantine from paganism to Catholicism. But if anybody ever read his history, he wasn't converted. The things that he did, oh my, the only thing he ever done religious was put the cross on the St. Sophia Church. That's the only thing he ever done and acted even religious. He was a reprobate. But they call it his conversion. Just about compares with some so-called conversions today. And in doing this, they consolidated and made early, formed the early Catholic Church later. Then at the first great Nicene Council, when I read that, I just fell on my knees. The great Nicene Council had taken place in AD 325. All of them was brought together. The bishops and the fathers of the Christian faith was brought together in Nicaea. That's the reason it's called the Nicaea Council in AD 325. And about 1,500 delegates came to the convention or council, about 1,500 delegates, and the laity outnumbered the bishops five to one in the delegation. But yet, through the Nicolaitans, the court formals, and the Constantine's political plan, they voted out, they outvoted the true church and won the victory, and issued in bishops and holy order of men, taking the Holy Spirit from the meeting and placing it upon bishops, cardinals, and popes, and so forth. And when the Pentecostal church, two groups, they separated, one wanted to stay with the word, the written word, others wanted to wanted a classical church. It was during the time of Constantine reign, and Constantine was not a religious man, he was a heathen to begin, but he was a politician that wanted to unite. Half of Rome was Christian, half of it was pagan, so he adopted some paganism and some form of Christianity to a classical group, and they made up their own religion. So we've seen this kingdom, how it transformed from Roman Empire to religion, and how Constantine tried to unite the state with religion. Do we all with me, please? Do we all get a picture, please? So if there's anything to look out for at the feet, it will be primarily Catholicism. The Roman church. Amen. But remember on the other side we have Protestantism. Amen. So we want to look at the fourth beast. Keep this kingdom in mind. I'll come back to it. But we want to look at the fourth beast. The satanic anointing working on these kingdoms. So let's go to Daniel 7 now. Let's see what Daniel saw. Then we we'll see the interpretation of that. Daniel 7, 7 to 8. After this, I saw in a night vision, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and he had great iron teeth. Remember, the Roman Empire was iron turned to what? Iron and clay. Great. He devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And he had ten horns. So all the other beasts, lion, leopard, bear, Daniel could easily describe them. But for this one, Daniel just called it terrible beast and dreadful. And Buddha Brahm in the church ages, in the Pagamian church age, So this, let's say for now, this is the beast. Now in the Pagamian church age, after Brother Brahma talked about the false unity of the church and the state, Brother Brahma talks about this beast. And it takes a prophet to see this. Amen. So in page 194, the last two paragraphs, this 
Remember, before this paragraph, he had read Daniel 2, the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Listen to what Brother Bram says here in page 194. This Roman Empire of iron, iron signifying power and great destructive force against opposition, was to be made of two main divisions, and it certainly was for the empire literally split into two, east and west. Both were very powerful, crushing all before them. But as the glory and the power of all empires fell, so this empire began to fall. Thus Rome fell. Pagan imperial Rome was no longer iron. She crumbled. She was wounded to war. Death. Rome could not rule. Could not now rule. Roman Empire, he means. It was all over. So thought the world. But how wrong the world was. There's no more Roman Empire, right? It's all over. For that head, Rome, though wounded, was not wounded to death. So, Roman Empire has ceased to exist, but is still in some form, in the form of religion. Amen? And Brother Bram said, um, translation of Revelation 13.3, and one of his hearts appeared to have been mortally wounded, the throat having been slashed, and his death stroke was healed, and the whole earth followed after the wild beast in amazement. So, Brother Bram tells us in this that the same beast is seen in Romans Revelation 13. So, let's go to Revelation 13 and see how John saw this same beast that Daniel saw and couldn't interpret or describe. Amen. So, Revelation 13. I'm going to read verses 1 to let me read one to four for now because of our time. Revelation 13, one to four. Are we all there, please? And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Remember when Daniel saw it, he described the ten horns. Do you all remember, please? And upon his head ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto war, a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of war. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now you see that this terrible beast has both parts of a leopard, which was the Babylonian kingdom anointing. Do you remember, please? It had parts of war. The beast that I saw the verse 2 like an, unto a leopard. The leopard was for the brass, the Grecian empire. Do we all get it, please? Great. And his feet were as the feet of war. The bear was war, the Medo Persian. So this beast has both, right? That anointing. Read the next one for me. For the Babylonian kingdom. Showing that this terrible beast has all these powers communicate, commu, um, how do you, combined into one. All these one were singular, singular, singular. But all these three has been conjoined into one beast at the feet. Actually, from the ties to the feet. Do we all get it, please? That makes him more terrible. Do you get it, please? And, of course, he tells us that dragon gave him his power. We'll come back to the dragon. But let's go on. So, Brother Bram, what Daniel saw that couldn't describe, John saw the same thing, and John gave us a vivid description. So the beast in Daniel 7, the feet, is the same beast in Revelation 13. Five minutes. Do we all get it, please? 13, 1 to 4. And remember, this beast, it said it was wounded to death. It's pagan Rome becoming Papa Rome. The people thought it was dead, but it was just metamorphosizing into another form. Amen. Do we all get it, please? Oh, do we get it, please? Great. I know it's heavy, but follow me quickly. I'll, uh, that's why I'm taking my time. 
Now we are about Revelations, the 13th chapter now, to begin with. Now if you would notice, on down the chapter here, I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the mountain. No, I beg your pardon, I'm in the wrong, he meant chapter 13, let's go on. 13th chapter, I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven hairs and ten horns, and upon the horns ten crowns, and upon his hairs the name blasphemy. What is blasphemy? Is to make fun of, ridicule, or talk about. Now watch, he had seven hairs, ten horns, and watch when he come up out of the sea. Now, Revelation 17, we'll go to the you that's put it down. Revelation 17, 15 said that the waters represent thickness. The waters represent thickness and multitude of the people. So, the beast represents what? Power. Ungodly power. Beast of prey raised up out of the people. And he stood upon the sands of the sea and I saw the beast. And the beast which I saw like a leopard, his feet was the feet of a bear, his smiled the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. The dragon, we got two things under consideration now. Watch this beast. It had four different characters in it. So this one beast had all the three together with what he had in the feet. So four characters built into one at the feet. That shows that where we are living is very, very dangerous. And if you would take Daniel 7, Brother Brown says, you take, you that marking it down, Daniel 7, Daniel saw the same vision 800 years before this. So what Daniel saw in Daniel 7, John saw in Revelation 13. Amen. Do we all get it, please? He saw those be separate one from the other in the beginning of the Gentile ruling. And here they are, John seen it at the end of the Gentile ruling. All four of those beasts represented in war. One. Them same old devils, demons that possess each kingdom of the Romans down through the Greece and so forth. And on down through the Gentile dispensation has come right down and all met up in one beast. We find him directly and see who he is, right? Those leper lion and all that dragon. How many knows what a dragon is? The dragon represents Rome. What well, Brother Bram actually you see later in the quote, clarification of this, is the dragon is represented by Rome. Because Rome is, 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 the, is, the, is the feet. And its representation now on earth is Rome. Amen? Huh. Now let's see where we are. Brother Daniel, give me five minutes, okay. Let's see where we are. And then you see here now that she caused rich and poor to receive a mark, but there's one class that she couldn't touch. You know that revelation. Listen to me. Let me read. So Brother Brown reads that again. Let me go on. Let me go on. Brother Brown tells us, Catholicism has swept into every nation under what? Heaven. That's right. As Daniel said about the iron going into the clay and so forth. Seven hairs, one down here. It said seven hairs, which was the beast. Seven hills on which the city sitteth. Remember when we talk about the foundation of that room, it was sitting on seven hills. Do you remember, please? Now what city is built on seven hills? Congregation says, hey, congregation says, great. So we see now that this terrible beast is all this combined. That's what I want to say here. At the feet. Are we on the same page, please? So if we want to look, vivid description of that beast that Daniel saw, we get it in Revelations 13. 1 to 4. So in wrapping up, we're going to focus on this. Romanism, Catholicism, and Protestantism. Russia and USA, of course, representing Eastern and Western powers. And we've seen how the church united with the state, how they moved from pagan Rome to war, papal Rome. And we've seen that their satanic anointing on them is this terrible beast described in Revelation 13. Do we all get it, please? So right now, the anointing that we are, the satanic anointing in political, for, that's why you shouldn't be interested in politics. So. The Christian... You shouldn't be involved in politics. I'm not saying don't vote, but don't make that your central theme. It's all satanic forces. Amen. So we read this, and of course, we've seen that. Um, oh, will I have time? You know, let me hold on there. I wanted to describe the dragon and the beast so that you see that when I said the dra five minutes, five minutes. Let me finish this. Okay, let me finish this. Brother Daniel, God bless you. Let's go to Revelation 12, 
no, no, that's not where I am. So we want to see the origin of this dragon, okay? I just want to pick point the origin. Then you see, I want to, the prophet to make that statement that I said that Rome is represented by, the dragon is represented by Rome. I want to clarify that. Then next time I'll build on that, okay? So let's go to Revelation. So we've now seen that this beast is Revelation 13, and a dragon gives us power to this Satanic anointing or power. So let's see the origin of this beast. Then I'll, I'll end it there. Revelations um, 12. 7 to 11 and I'll, I'll, I'll close. But I know we had some new comments so I had to do some background. Yes, forgive me. Okay. Okay. So Revelations 12. 7 to 11, quickly. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called war. And Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast um, out with him. When you go read the rest. So we see that the dragon in Bible even is Clearly, specifically mentioned as what? The devil, Satan. And Brother Bram said, represents Rome. I want you to see that Brother Bram rep meant is represented by Rome so that we will know what the dragon is. We will know what the beast is. Are you with me, please? Great. Let's go. The dragon, who was the dragon? Satan. Satan. What nation did it represent? Rome. So you get it when I said the dragon was represented by Rome. Do you get it, please? And he had angels, and here they are, John Cena and the end of the Gentile ruling. All four of those beasts represented in one, the same old devils, demons, they possess each kingdom of the Romans, down through, and the Greeks, and so forth, and on down through the Gentile dispensation, has come right down and all met in one beast. We'll find him directly and see who he is, right? All those leopard, lion, and that, a dragon. How many knows what a dragon is? The dragon represents Rome. Oh. I think we have to stop. I, I, I myself stopped, so let me stop. Yeah, I thought I had more. But you see, you, you see that, that the, the dragon is what? Satan. And the, the beast is the satanic anointing that he rules with. And it's represented now on, in terms of nation as what? Rome. Do we all get it, please? Don't forget, don't forget this one. So... Basic thing. Dragon is what? Satan. And we've seen that the beast is pagan Rome becoming what? Papal Rome. We will take it from there. We'll see how the connections with the United States and Russia. And we saw the bamboo curtain as well. Iron curtain and the purple curtain. And Brother Bram said we should keep our eye on that purple curtain. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the revelation of these things in our day. Thank you for the privilege of knowing them. I pray, Lord, not for intellectual display, but Heavenly Father, grant us understanding that we may know how to conduct our lives. Help us walk that narrow way, serving you in truth and spirit, knowing that at all the times, no more, may we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.